Zodiac Astronomy. Okay. And um, it's got, um, it covers a number of different topics, but one is just, it kind of gives an introduction to the kinds of things that we find in space. Mm -hmm. you know, what, are, what are planets and what are stars and kind of gives you a feel for the size of these things. It really shows you how the universe declares God's glory. There's a chapter then on the age of things, because that's one of the places where the secularists say the Bible can't be trusted because mm -hmm. the biblical timeline is a few thousand, about 6,000 years, something like that from creation to now. And uh, that's wildly at odds with what the secularists claim to be the scientific position of 13.8 billion years. And that changes every now and then. But what this, what the, there's an entire chapter showing you various lines of evidence that are inconsistent with the billions of years, such as the recession rate of the moon, the rate at which the moon is moving away from the earth. And there's a pretty clear discussion on that and how that can't have been going on for billions of years. Because if you run it backwards, the earth and moon would have been in the same place at the same time, 1.4 mm -hmm. billion years in a hypothetical past. They can't be 4.5 billion years old, as the secularists teach. The true age is a, is a few thousand years. And so that the moon would have been 750 feet closer to the earth at creation, not a big deal. Uh, other things like that, like the excess heat given off by Jupiter, um, uh, the, mag the strong magnetic fields of Jupiter and Saturn, these things decay with time. And so if these planets were really as old as the secularists believe, those magnetic fields should be gone by now, but wow. they're still there, they're still strong. So there's an entire chapter on that. There's a, there's a chapter on sort of earth and its uniqueness. Uh, there's some discussion about um, what about extraterrestrial life, and mm -hmm. and then there's a discussion on the starlight. A brief discussion on the starlight issue. I've I've um, written more on that since then, but there's at least okay. you know some uh, it's at least addressed in that book. So it's basically giving you the the scientific ammunition you need mm -hmm. to refute somebody who says, well, science has disproved the, the science of astronomy has disproved the the creation account or the Bible in general. Uh, no, it hasn't. And in fact, there, there's one of the chapters in the book is on things that the Bible indicates, such as the, the roundness, the spherical nature of the earth, mm -hmm. uh, that we're ahead of its time. As far as I can tell, the Bible's talking about the roundness of the earth back in Job, which is 2000 BC. It wasn't until about 500 uh, BC that the Greeks finally came to accept that. And they're usually considered the first, but the Bible had it before that. Lots of stuff like that. Lots of stuff mm -hmm. like that. The Bible's not a textbook on science, but when it touches on astronomy, it's right because mm -hmm. it's inspired by God and he does know right. how the universe works. <laughs> right. Right.